Lift him up to see that bids you Let the dying look and live To a weary thirsting sinners Living waters he will give And the one so weak and lowly Yet the prince of hell was he And the blind who grope in darkness Through the blood of Christ shall see Lift him up, the risen Savior, high amid the waiting throng. Lift him up to see the speaker, now he bids you flee from wrong. Lift him up, this precious Savior, let the multitude behold. They with willing hearts shall seek him, he will draw them to his fold. They shall gather from the wayside, hastening on with joyous feet. They shall bear the cross of Jesus, and shall find salvation sweet. Lifting of the risen Savior, high amid the waiting throng. Lift him up to see the speaker, now he bids you flee from wrong. Lift him up in all his glory, tis the Son of God on high. Lift him up, his love shall draw them, in the careless shall draw nigh. Let them hear again the story of the cross, the death of shame. And from tongue to tongue repeat it, mighty throng shall bless his name. Lift him up, the risen Savior, high amid the waiting throng. Lift him up to see the speaker, now he bids you flee from wrong. Oh, then lift him up in singing, lift the Savior up in prayer. He the glorious Redeemer, all the sins of men did bear. Yes, the young shall bow before him, and the old their voices raise. All the deaf shall hear Hosanna, and the dumb shall shout his praise. Lift him up, the risen Savior, high amid the waiting throng. Lift him up to see the speaker, now he bids you flee from wrong. And indeed, we want to welcome you here to EJC Virtual Church. Let me hope that you will enjoy our song service, and we invite you to join us as we sing hymn number 368, Watchman Blow the Gospel Trumpet. Gospel trumpet, every soul a warning given. Whosoever hears a message, may repent and turn and live. Blow the trumpet, trusty watchman. Blow it loud or land and sea. God's commission sound the message. Every captive may be free. Sound it, Lord, or every hilltop, gloomy shade and sunny plain. Ocean depths receive the message, full salvation's glad refrain. Blow the trumpet, trusty watchman. Blow it loud or land and sea. God's commission sounds a message. Every captive may be free. Sound it in the hedge and highway. Earth's dry spot where eggs are wrong. Let it tell all things are ready. Father waits to 
welcome home. Blow the trumpet, trusty watchman. Blow in louder land and sea. God's commission sounds a message. Every captive may be free. Sound it for the heavy laden, weary longing to be free. Sound the Savior's invitation. Sweet this saying, come to me. Blow the trumpet, trusty watchman. Blow in louder land and sea. God's commission sound the message. Every captive may. three four we speak of the realms of the blessed that country so bright and so fair and of there is glories confessed but what must it be to be there we speak of the realms of the blessed that country so bright and so fair and of our its glories confessed, God, what must it be to be there? We speak of His pathway of gold, its waters with jewels so rare, its wonders and pleasures untold. God, what must it be to be there? We speak of His freedom from sin. From sorrow, temptation, and care, from trials without and within, but what must it be to be there? We speak of His service of love, of the robes which the glorified wear, of the church of the firstborn above, but what must it be to be there? Our morning is all as an end, when raised by the life-giving word, we see the new city descend, adorned as a bride for her Lord. The city so holy and clean, no sorrow can breathe in the air, no gloom of affliction or sin, no shadow of evil is there. Do thou with temptation and woe, for heaven my spirit prepare, and shortly I also shall know, and feel what it is to be there. Then o'er the bright fields we shall roam, in glory celestial and fair, with saints and with angels at home, and Jesus himself will be there. And we say, praise the Lord, number 439. How far from home I asked us on, I bent my steps, the watchman spake. 439. How far from home I ask as on, I bent my steps, the watchman spake. The long dark night is almost gone, the morning soon will break. Then we no more, but speed thy flight, with hope's bright star, thy guiding ray. Till thou shalt reach the realms of light in everlasting day. I asked a warrior on the field, this was his soul, inspiring song. With courage bold, the sword I wield, the battle is not long. Oh, 
victory is won. I ask again, I see and shun, sing with one voice to make reply. Time's wasting sands are nearly run, eternity is nigh. And we no more with warning tones, portentous signs are thickening round. The whole creation waiting groans to hear the trumpet sound. Not far from home, a oh blessed thought, the traveler's lonely hearts to cheer. Which of the healing balm has brought And dried the mourner's tears Then weep no more Since we shall meet Where weary foot steps never roam Or try us past For joys complete Safe in our Father's Finally, number 434, four. oh, there'll be joy when the work is done, joy when the reapers gather home. Number 430. Oh, there'll be joy when the work is done. Joy when the reapers gather all, bringing the sheaves that set off sun to the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy, there be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joys never die. Joy, joy, for the day draweth not when the work. Are the songs that we hope to sing grateful the thanks for heart shall bring praising forever Christ our King in the new Jerusalem joy joy there be joy by and by joy joy where the joys never die joy joy for the day joy at night when the workers gather on. Pure are the joys that await us there. Many the golden mansions fair. Jesus himself doth them prepare in the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy, there be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joy never dies. Joy, joy, where the day joy is not when the workers gather home. Good evening, everyone, and happy, happy Sunday. Welcome to the final evening of our stewardship week. Making God first, managing God's possession. And oh, what a week it has been. Indeed, it has been a joy and a privilege for us to be reprioritized into what we ought to be doing, putting God first in our life. There's a song that I grew up singing um, as a child. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, yes, it is believed that when we put God first, all other things fall into their proper place. When we put God first, all other things will fall into their proper place. I am Ryan Joe Brown, and I will be taking you through uh, this evening worship. I pray that as we seek to worship our Maker and our King, uh, that you will pause at this moment, call a friend, right? Share this link with a friend uh, that they can be able to share and learn more 
about our creator, our king, and that we all can seek to put God first in our life. So to get the program started, we're going to have the opening prayer by Pastor Paul Bailey. Let us pray. Eternal Father, and our God, who art in heaven, tonight, Lord, we approach your throne of grace, seeking your love and your mercy. Lord, I pray that tonight, as we have come to worship you, we we'll worship you in the beauty of holiness. Lord, we are weak, but the Lord strong. Give us strength, dear Father, so as we go through tonight's service, your name will be glorified. Bless the entire night's program, O oh God. And may we remember that there is no God like you. You are the same God of yesterday, today, and forever. You does not change. And so, Father, into your hands we commit this service. Take charge, dear Father. And Lord, we look forward to that day when you shall come with power and great glory. May all of us, because you have been faithful, will meet you in peace. Take us charge, take in charge again, dear Father. And Lord, when you shall come, save us, we pray. This is our prayer of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, let the people say, Amen and Amen. Putting God first means that he deserves all the glory, all the praise. He's to be worshipped. At this time, we'll have special music that will seek to give all the praise and glory to our maker and our king. There's a list of my love of all my sins, of everything that I've done wrong. I'm so ashamed. There's nowhere left for me to hide. This is the day I must answer for my life. My fate was in the his hands but then he turned to me and said I know you I love you I gave my life to save you love paid the price begin to comprehend what kind of grace will take a place for all my sin I stand in awe now that I have been set free and the tears will as I look at the cross cause it should have been me my fate was in the our he stretches them to me and says, I know you, I love you, I gave my life 
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless and keep us. Please guide and protect us. Please bless the leaders of the conference. Please bless the leaders of each church, dear Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for everything you've done and everything you'll ever do. Please cover us under your washing blood. Please forgive us of our sins. Please bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Indeed, this week has been a blessing. Started out greatly with Pastor Dr. Alonzo White as he gave us a powerful charge. And then it picked up in midweek with Pastor Omar Oliphant. And then yesterday it was a high day in Zion with Pastor Henry. Now this evening to give the final charge for our stewardship week, we have Pastor Anthony Ball. Pastor Ball is the pastor for the New Haven District of Churches. He is my friend. He, he is a prior warrior. He is a powerful preacher in Zion, a dedicated servant. And what I would say, a servant of God and a friend to man. As Pastor Ball seeks to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, I'm asking at this time to take a few minutes, a few seconds, just to pray for Pastor Ball and pray that even as those who watch this series, watch his message this evening, uh, that they will be blessed. And even more than being blessed, they'll be motivated to put God first in their lives. So before Pastor Ball seeks to share the word, we will have a musical item by Sister Carisha Lee from the Woodford District of Churches. God bless. <laughs> I face a mountain that I've never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, He's here in my purse. I need you like I never had before. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes it Get a hold of me. 
Let me say good evening to everyone. I pray by God's grace that you had a very productive day. I also pray that this stewardship week was beneficial to you. And I pray by God's grace that you are putting into practice what you have learned. This evening's presentation is the final in this week's stewardship emphasis. And the message comes to us this evening in the form of a question. And the question is, when is enough really enough? This evening's message is adapted from one of the stewardship readings for this week. This message was originally prepared by Ken Schnell, a GC Stewardship Ministries Resource Specialist. Before I get into the meat of the message, let us pray. Our eternal Father and our God, we thank you today for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your amazing grace, for what you have done for us and for what you continue to do for us and what you'll do for us in the future. I pray now that you will speak to me and speak through me and speak to the hearts of your children in Jesus' precious name. Amen. According to Ken Snell, Life is a journey that is made up of a series of unique experiences. No two persons' paths in life are quite the same. Each person's path is unique. Nevertheless, there are times and places where our paths intersect where our lives touch each other in meaningful ways. This is because we were created by God to be social beings who benefit from our relationship with others. This truth was echoed by John Doan in his 400-year-old poem in which he states that no man is an island. No man stands alone. No one lives in this world alone. We are all inter 
related. You need me and I need you. I need you and you need me. We need each other in order to be able to survive in this world. Life can also be lightened as an individual taking a trip. That person may choose to speed through in record time. Or that person may choose to take some time to enjoy the journey. To enjoy the journey. For instance, if I decide to take a trip around Jamaica, if I decide to circle Jamaica, I can choose to complete the journey in record time and be recognized for that. To have my name written in the Guinness Book of Record. However, I can choose to do something else. I can choose to make it an educational experience. I can choose to take my time as I travel around Jamaica to meet new people, get new experiences, learn of unique ways and different ways that people do things and enjoy new foods and new experiences. Whichever of the two approaches I choose, the goal is the same, and that is to circle Jamaica. However, clearly, the sightseeing journey would be more beneficial for me or to me. I would learn more. I would be touched by more people. And I would touch the lives of more people. And essentially, that's what God wants of us as Christians. We are Christians. We are social beings. There are some individuals who live like hermits. They live all by themselves, stay all by themselves. They think that if they mix and mingle, that they are going to be corrupted. But that's not what God wants of us. The Lord has placed us in this world to make a difference in the world. We are the light of the world. And we must allow our lights to shine so that people may see God in us and want to know the God we serve and want to be a part of this family, this family that is on its journey home, its journey to eternal life. I'm going to share with you now a few rules that Schnell has given us. And he said that you can use these rules to make your life more meaningful. He says, when you are traveling through life, you must enjoy the moment. You must enjoy the moment. Don't want to be anywhere else than where you are at the moment. Now, I am sure that is not saying that you should not have ambition. I'm sure that is not saying that you should not aim to be the best you can be. But what he's saying here is saying that you must enjoy the moment because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what the next minute, minute holds. You don't know. So you must enjoy the moment when you do so. This will minimize anxiety and frustration. Some people are anxious. Some people are frustrated 
because they're always thinking of being elsewhere than where they are in the moment. Where you are at right now, enjoy the moment. Number two, he says, begin now to save something. Share something and spend the balance wisely. Begin now to save something. Saving is important. You can't use everything now. Although we are people of faith, although we believe that God is well able to take care of us, God also wants us to prepare for the future. God wants us to prepare for tomorrow. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. So we must save something now. That's what he's saying. But as you save, remember that you can only touch the lives of others when you share something with others. So although you are saving, you must also be sharing. As a matter of fact, that which you will share with individuals will go further than that which you save. Because that which you share with somebody, you may not know that that thing may just pull that person out of a situation that he or she was struggling with. You may not know you share something with a lady today and that something is taken home to feed an entire family. You can rescue an entire family just by sharing. And so he says you should share something and you must spend the balance wisely. Some people believe that if you have saved and if you have shared, then you can just go ahead and spend without control. No, it does not work that way. We are wise people and God expects us to act wisely at all times. And so, Whatever we have left after we have saved and shared, we must spend wisely. Spend it wisely on ourselves. Spend it wisely. Let us use it to enhance the work of God. He says, use enough to satisfy your basic need so you can share the rest with others. Then he says, freeze your expenses, but not your income. In other words, he's saying, or, or, or let, let me back up a little. There are individual who, individuals who never have enough. They are surviving well on the salary that they receive now. But they get a raise tomorrow, and they still are not able to fulfill their basic needs. Why? Because they have not learned to control their spending. You can't just buy everything that you see on sale. You can't just buy something because it looks good or buy it because somebody else has it. No. Control your spending. Know what you need and spend on those things. If you can, gen and he says also, if you can generate, that's what he, let, me, let me reverse and go back to the start of this uh, counsel that he has given to us. He says, freeze your expenses, but not your income. Not your income. If you can generate more so you can make more to share more, then go ahead and do that. 
So learn to control your spending. But find a way to increase your income. The more income you have is the more you will be able to help others. And the more you will be able to give to the work of the Lord. He says also, enjoy the blessings of the Lord now. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord now. And this is akin to the advice that he gave earlier when he says, learn to enjoy the moment. Treat yourself a little now. Treat your family a little now. Treat others a little now. Get the benefit from that which you have amassed now. Don't wait until you retire. Because a lot of times when people wait until they retire to enjoy what they have amassed, they find out that it's too late. And most of the money is then used to take care of themselves, going to the doctor and buying medicine. Never get the chance to enjoy themselves. Enjoy now. And the last one that I'll share with you today is he says, live a life of contentment. We're going to expand on that a little later. What is stewardship? Stewardship is generally defined as being put in charge of the goods or property of, a, of someone else. So a steward is someone who is put in charge of the goods or property of someone else. Therefore, every human being is a steward. Every human being. Because all that we have, we receive from God. All that we are, we are here today not because of ourselves. We are here today not because of evolution. As some people say, we are here today because of God. Everything that we have was given to us by God. And so we all are stewards. We all are expected to take care of God's property. However, Christian stewardship is different. As Christian stewards, we are expected to be faithful and loyal to the one who has called us, commissioned us, and equipped us. We have been called, the Bible says, out of darkness into the marvelous light of the grace of God. We were lost in sin and trespasses. We were heading down to the pit of sure destruction when Jesus stretched out his wounded hands and rescued us. He called us out of darkness into the marvelous light of his grace. And he has gifted us. Each of us has at least one gift. You have at least one gift. You have been gifted by God. You have been commissioned by God to go in the world and to use the gift that he has given you to bless others. Hear me. Don't you sit where you are comfortable in your seats, comfortable on your bed, or comfortable where you are and think that Christians are just called to live by themselves and do nothing wrong. Some people think that way. No, you are not a Christian unless you are on the mission for Jesus. 
Because Christianity means that we are living like Jesus. We are behaving like Jesus. And our mission is the same as the mission that Jesus had when he came to planet earth. So as Christians towards, we cannot afford our, to allow ourselves to be led by the standards of the world. The world says nothing is ever enough. Thus many are led to ruin trying to live up to the Joneses. Trying to live up to the standards of the world and not according to the will of God. Here's what Paul says in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, reading verses uh, 9 through to 12. Paul says, they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Paul says that they that will be rich. Listen to me. There is nothing wrong with wealth. There is nothing wrong with having ambition. There is nothing wrong with wanting to have a little more money. Because the more you have is the more you can do. But when you focus on the wealth. When you allow the wealth to be the thing that control your mind and your action, then that's where the problem is. And that is why the Bible says in verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Some people get it wrong. They say money is the root of all evil. No! Money is not the root of all evil. Paul says the love of money, the love of money. When you put money before your brothers and your sisters, when you put money before your family, when you put money before God, that's where the problem is. The love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. They erred from the faith, chasing after money, running down wealth. The word of God says that they pierce themselves. Pierce themselves. They are inflicting wound on themselves, bringing sorrow on themselves let me let tell you this my brothers and sisters it does not matter how much money you have if you don't have jesus if your mind is not in the right place you're not gonna be satisfied you're you're gonna want to be having a little more money and a little more money every time that's how it is but Paul says, but thou, O man of God, man of God, woman of God, my brothers and my sisters of God, the counsel is flee these things and follow after righteousness. Praise God. Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Oh, glory to God. If we were putting the kind of effort to be righteous as we put in the kind of effort to get more money, this world would be a better place. I'm repeating it. There is nothing wrong with money. But money must have its correct place in your life. Money can't come first. God must come first. And when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love God with your entire being. And the second is just like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. Am I talking to you, my brothers and my sisters? We are told to fight 
the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That is what is important. Eternal life is what is important. Whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Christian stewards, we live by different rules. We have a high calling and we are under the guidance of, an etern of uh, the eternal commander. He knows what is best for us. He knows what we need. He has called us. He has commissioned us. And he has sent us to make a difference in the lives of individuals. We move by a different beat. We march to a different sound and expect a different outcome. We are not like the world. Don't forget that. We are not like the world. Babylon and Jerusalem are two different places. We are not like the world. So the question is asked, how much is really enough? Or when is enough really enough? Earlier, I read where Paul says that we must learn to be content. Here's what the word of God says. The word of God says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What will you give in exchange for your soul? Paul says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. One of the problems we have is that we are always looking on the other side. We are always looking at what others have. Therefore, contentment evades many of us. I know Paul says, both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then he says in verse 13 of Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hear me, my brothers and my sisters. Contentment is very important. Important for Christian stewards. One of the reasons why people rob God. One of the people reason rather reasons why people fail to give back to God what belongs to Him. It is because we're always or because they're always coveting what belongs to God. What God, God has given us 90%, but we are not contented with the 90. We want God 10% also. And so, if we can't get to this place, we're always going to have problems. We're always going to have problems. And remember, my brothers and my sisters, the fool and his money will depart. One day, you're going to leave your money. Or your money is going to leave you. What will last forever is what you give to Jesus. And that is why we are counseled to send our treasures up to heaven. Praise God. Send your treasures up to heaven. God knows how to take care of your treasures for you. And when it is time for you to make that withdrawal, God knows 
how to give it back to you with blessings upon blessings. And I say praise God to that. And so as Christian stewards who are contented, we will know where God is leading us. We will know God's purpose for our lives. We will know that the little things and the big things that take place in our lives, that God is using those things to make us into the persons he wants us to be. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, Paul says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called unto his purpose. As long as you belong to Jesus, as long as you belong to God, as long as you are walking as he wants you to walk, you can be assured that God is leading you to the place that he wants you to be. You can be assured that God is working through you to accomplish his will. Ellen White says, I wrote in the book, The Highest Honor, page 272, God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led if they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are fulfilling as co-workers with him. Not Enoch, who was translated to heaven. Not Elijah, who ascended in a chariot of fire, was greater or more honored than John the Baptist, who perished alone in the dungeon. I want for you to get that. I want for you to sink that in. She's saying here that everything that takes place in your life, once you belong to God, once you are being faithful to God, once you are walking the way that God wants you to walk, everything that takes place in your life is guided, is directed by God. That's a reality. It doesn't matter how painful it is. It doesn't matter how uncomfortable it is. Once God is in control, you can be assured that God is working out everything for his good and everything for your good. And then he says, then she says rather, not Enoch who was translated to heaven, not seeing death, not Elijah who was taken up in a chariot of fire, not seeing death, was greater and more honored than John the Baptist, who perished alone in a dungeon. Hear me, my brothers and my sisters. Listen to me. It is an honor to suffer for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is an honor to suffer for God. It is an honor... When you know that you're walking as God wants you to walk, you are doing what, God's, what God wants you to do, but then the devil is after you. And listen to me, as long as you're on God's side, you are number one enemy of the devil. And so expect him to come at you with everything that he has. That's what the Bible says about the remnant church of Bible prophecy. The word of God says that the devil is angry. He's wrath. He's mad. He's upset with us. Why? Because we are keeping the commandments of God. And we have the testimonies of Jesus. So if you're a follower of God, if you are a member of God's remnant church, expect the enemy. To come at you with fiery darts. But also expect God to keep you safe. To keep you secure. I wrap up 
by looking at what is ultimate contentment. Oh yes, there are a lot of things in this world to enjoy. We are now in the mango season and I am enjoying mangoes. Yes, we had uh, apples uh, recently and we still have them and I'm enjoying the apples. I'm enjoying the star apples. I'm enjoying God's wonderful creation. In spite of the fact that we are in the midst of a pandemic, there are a number of things that we can enjoy. We can enjoy our families. We can enjoy the fellowship that we have with our brothers and our sisters. Although we are asked to observe uh, health protocols. And so, listen to me. There are a lot to be gained from being a Christian, from being a follower of Jesus Christ. There are a lot of benefits. And I want to thank God for those benefits because God used this church to move me from where I was to, and bring me to this place today. And if I, be, if I should start to tell you my life story, I would not stop for the rest of this evening. Are you listening to me? So I won't be going there. But I'm telling you, I'm enjoying my experience with God. I don't care what anybody else say about Christianity. I don't care what anybody else think about Christianity. I'm telling you now, I'm enjoying my experience with God. Because my Jesus is nice. My Jesus is sweet. My Jesus is bonus. My Jesus is everything to me. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. As much as we can enjoy and planet Earth, ultimate satisfaction is yet to come. Ultimate satisfaction is yet to come. And we will know what satisfaction is when we hear from the lips of Jesus, well done, good and faithful servants. But as I have said over and over again, nobody can bribe Jesus. Nobody can, God has no favorite. So if you have not done well, you will not hear from the lips of God. You will not hear from the lips of Jesus. Well done. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. If you remain faithful, if you allow God to use you, if you use what God has blessed you with to bless others and to finish his work, hear me? You're going to hear one of these days. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your Lord. That's when we're going to have true satisfaction. That's when we're going to have true satisfaction. And John says, Paul says rather, in the book of Revelation, Revelation 2 and verse 10, we are counseled, to be faithful to the end. <laughs> be faithful until death, God says. Be faithful until death, our Savior says. And I will give you a crown of life. My brothers and my sisters, one of these days, we're going to hear, well done. And Jesus says, I'm coming back. And I got my reward with me to give to those who have been faithful. Hear me. Hear me today. It does not matter the challenges or the challenge you are experiencing today. Be faithful to Jesus. Because we have a God. He is the no one can reward. No one can pay. No one can do it like Jesus does it. When he comes... He's going to give us a reward. He's going to give us a reward that we can't even now think about. We can't even now imagine. But that reward will only go to those who are faithful. 
Be faithful, my brothers and my sisters. Be faithful to the end. Be faithful. Be faithful. And hey, learn to be contented with what the Lord has given to you. Learn to enjoy the moment. Stop and smell the roses. Enjoy some of the things that God has blessed you with. And use some to benefit others, to bless others. And I guarantee you, if you follow the counsels given this evening, you will hear from his lips, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your Lord. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. Let us pray. Our eternal God and our Father, we're thankful for your amazing grace. We're thankful for your loving kindness. We're thankful, O oh God, for the God that you have been, the God that you are, and the God that you will be to your children. You have never failed us yet, and you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Yes, Lord, we're in the midst of a health crisis. But even in the midst of this crisis, we have felt your hands. We have felt your presence. We know that you are with us. We know that you are leading. And we know that you will fulfill all your promises. Oh, Lord, your children need you. Your people need you. They are those who are struggling to be good stewards. And as the time becomes more difficult, they are being tempted by the enemy of our souls to be unfaithful, to think only about self. There are those, oh, Father, who have become comfortable in their homes, failing to get up and to go out and to be a part of the mission that you have given to your people. There are those who are amassing and hoarding wealth for themselves and for nobody else. But, oh, Father, oh, God, I pray that you speak to their hearts right now. Let them know. That if they fail to use what you have blessed them with in this life. Then it will have no use for them or to them in the life to come. But if they use what you have blessed them with now. You will grant them a reward far more than they have sacrificed for you. Oh Lord, thank you again for your blessings. Thank you for your promises. And we claim them all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We bless the name of the Lord for his words. Every time we hear the word of God, it does something. It really motivates and inspires to, to make a change. When I thank Pastor Ball for allowing God to use him in such a powerful and mighty way. Pastor Bob, may God continue to bless your ministry and bless your family as you continue to minister. I want to thank all the viewers for staying and for watching and for sharing this link. And just want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you can um, know exactly when we come on each evening. Now, as we continue to press on throughout this week, I am inviting you to make sure uh, that you put God first in your life, right? Remember that text. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, all that you need, shall be added unto you. I think the Message Bible says, when you put God first in your time, in your talent, in your treasure, and in your temple, all that you need will be running after you. Put God first in your life.
Join us tomorrow evening for It's All Connected with Dr. Michelle Hamilton and her team. Remember, grab your family and your friends. It's All Connected. 7.30 p.m. sharp. Don't miss it.